Hi, I'm Adrian Bowles with RT Insights and Storm Insights. And in this series, we talk to uh, executives at emerging technology firms, innovative technology firms, about issues that we find when we talk to technology buyers. People want to get into the IoT. They've heard all the wonderful things it can do for them. But there's a question about, am I getting in too early? Am I getting in too late? Is it risky to get in too early? If I get in now, uh, am I going to have to throw out what I buy because everything is changing so fast? And to help me address the question today is uh, Mike Peach, General Manager of Middleware at Red Hat. So Mike, what do you see uh, when you talk to customers? And also, what do you do internally so that you're not always changing things? Much of the, the application development software, things like middleware, you know, supporting sort of wheels, if you will, so that you're not reinventing wheels, for IoT applications are pretty much the same wheels that you're going to use for more general purpose applications. So in other words, you don't really need to go buy a lot of IoT specific, highly specialized components for your application development. There certainly are and will continue to be some, mm -hmm. but those, those incremental specialized pieces are, are fairly contained and, and I won't say isolated, but they're, they're, they're reasonably contained, right? And therefore, much of the, the middleware and infrastructure software that an enterprise likely already has will very much be relevant and be used in their IoT application development. I think on top of that, or starting from, from that, that foundational point, if an enterprise is kind of dipping its toe in the water and starting to experiment with IoT applications, try to stick to standards as much as possible. So to the extent that uh, certain aspects of IoT solutions are standardized, whether it's, let's say, messaging protocols like sure. MQTT and so on, you know, really, really stick with the, the more established ones of those. I would say uh, another thing to keep in mind in order to minimize the kind of thrash that might have to happen in the future um, as standards change, as practices change, as architectural sort of paradigms change, uh, would be to sort of factor out the, the variable elements, uh, let's say, related to the kinds of devices, the data structures, and so on as much as possible. So one example of what I mean by sort of factoring out would be to uh, factor out business logic into rules, right? And okay. use a rules engine. So you don't have everything hard-coded, A, hard-coded, and B, hard-coded in a way that's very specific to an existing architecture, right? If you've abstracted, uh, let's say, this, uh, the way that data gets filtered and aggregated into a set of rules uh, that are easily editable, you've now sort of given yourself a lot of flexibility into how you manipulate the uh, you know, the architecture going forward, having those rules isolated or at least contained in a fairly easy to get at uh, sort of location. This, this gives the business person some, some, some comfort in knowing that the, the business specific logic is reasonably separate from the architecture and the, the lower level considerations that developers care about such that, that that business person, that business leader can have someone who's not even necessarily a programmer edit rules, make changes to those rules, and act in an agile way with respect to the business without having to depend on too many sort of heavier weight technical changes. Sounds like the, the key issues then for the business buyer um, are look at standards-based solutions and separate the business logic by uh, having a layer or business rules engine that captures that uh, separate from any decisions you might back, make about what sort of sensors or what sort of devices or what sort of protocols you need. Exactly. The key idea there is that separation. Separation of the business, business logic and the, and the business concerns from the sort of more detailed yeah. technical concerns. Great. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching. If you're interested in getting more information on Red Hat's solution for the IoT stack, redhat.com for more videos in this series or rtinsights.com. Thank you.